Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. And of course, if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. Let's welcome all our friends coming on to the stream. Okay, we have Tracy, Taz, yo yo. Okay, XRP Shillbilly, Tracy Lewis, Tyson, welcome. We have Oklahoma. Tyson wants good news. I'll do my best. Nashville, Miami, London, Boomer Sooner. Okay. Dubai says hello. Belgium. All right. Nick, let's go, Bill. Let's go. All right. South Africa, Puerto Rico. Okay. Lawn Shark, welcome. Okay. Long Island. How you doing? Toronto, Canada. The Maple Leafs fans are back. All right. We have Vietnam. We have Texas, Orange County. Okay. Austin, Texas wants to bring on the Bears. Georgia back in the house. Richard, how you doing? Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the market update. We have Slovenia coming to us from Europe. Okay. We have Alberta, Canada. We have them coming in from all over the world. Okay. And we have India up late at night. Thank you for staying up for us. All right, folks, let's go and get into your market update. When will crypto go back up? Are you getting old waiting? I am. Okay. I studied this all weekend. Let's go back to last week and discuss what we talked about. So for timestamp purposes, today is March 14th, midday. Last week, we discussed crypto as a part of a new monetary order, right? Russians got cut out of SWIFT. Russian citizens may need crypto to function in their daily lives. Sounds like a reasonable research thesis, right? Well, where's the bid? Where's the bid? Okay. The, the scariest thing for me is to see Bitcoin just going sideways, doing nothing. Now, in an ETH bull market, ETH going sideways is okay. But I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to get into it in a minute. It's the ghost of 2018 if you see Bitcoin just sit still. All right, let's get into it. First of all, the best way to make money in altcoins is to have tokenmetrics.com. You want to know what the small coins are? We were on Luna, okay, Waves, etc. The best way to do it is to get a subscription and get our AI along with our human-driven altcoin research and TA. Luckily for women, Women's History Month, you can get 10% off if you subscribe and that's good lifetime. So if you subscribe and don't cancel, you get 10% off lifetime. The coupon code is WIC10. That's WIC10. Make money in crypto no matter what happens. Now let's jump into macro and discuss some of the things that I'm seeing, why I care, and how it connects to Bitcoin and also 2018. So after a reduction in interest rates because of a fear trade over Russia, all right, U.S. long-term interest rates, that's U.S. 10Y, that's the yield or the interest rate that comes from the U.S. 10-year government bond. U.S. 10Y is above 2%. And is currently smoking to the upside. 
I think the reason for this is that <clears throat> there's a limit as to how much the Federal Reserve can raise rates because of the geopolitical situation and inflation is out of control. So when that normally happens, bonds go down and rates go up. Okay, even more disturbing is what's going on in European interest rates, okay? The ECB can't tighten at all. That's a long story. So they have to just pretend inflation's not there, which of course wasn't going to work before the war and is definitely kind of not going to work after it or during it. So European long-term interest rates have gone from zero to 40 basis points in two days. Now you're like, that's not a lot. Well, think of it like an altcoin, right? If you had an altcoin go from zero to 40 cents, that's a lot. That's a lot. European interest rates, the 10 year note yield in Europe may get as high as 50 basis points. Okay. People are freaking out over there because of inflation, problems with banks, problems with governments, you name it. They're dumping bonds in the US and in Europe. Now, what impact is this having and why do you care? Okay. The orange line is the US 10 year note yield. The blue line is Chinese stocks, okay? Chinese stocks as traded on the US ETF FXI. That's mainland Chinese stocks traded in Hong Kong, packaged up into an ETF that is traded in the United States. And as you can see, as rates pump, FXI or Chinese stocks dump. Why? Well, Higher rates and higher inflation could start a recession. Also, higher rates could hurt the Chinese because they've got insolvent real estate companies. Okay. Higher rates, lower Chinese stocks could enhance geopolitical tensions. Higher rates was also a hallmark of 2018. S&P futures, stocks in the US, aka monkey market, continues to hold itself together. Everyone is getting bearish stocks. That's probably something else that's holding it up, at least for the moment. All right. There is a series of ones and twos. What's that? Well, it's like, it starts, it stops. It starts, it stops. It starts, it stops. Right. Normally when you get that type of formation, once you sort of wind up the spring, it just goes, or in this case, you wind up the spring and it goes down. So I'd be worried about stocks. And when it comes to crypto, bond yields rising and stocks with a negative formation scares the bejesus out of me. So when will crypto go back up? When stocks stabilize and interest rates stop rising. That's the answer. You got to have ES1, US 10Y on trading view, along with EU 10Y. And don't forget FXI for short, okay, for good measure. Now, let's get to crypto. Russia liquidating crypto in the UAE to seek safe havens. The United Arab Emirates has not participated in Russian sanctions. According to CNBC, large amounts of Russia, Russian Bitcoin is finding its way to the UAE right? Either to get sold, to get hard currency, or to get used to purchase real estate. Okay. Because real estate assets, they won't try to freeze them in the UAE. They've tried to do that in London. I'm not sure if they're going to get away with that, but obviously, you know, if you had a lot of money and you had Bitcoin, you'd be shipping it somewhere where you can either spend it. Okay. Or, you know, cash it out for some form of fiat currency because your fiat currency, the Russian ruble is having problems. Now, why does this matter? In, in 2018, the thing that killed the market for Bitcoin was that miners were experiencing hardware upgrades, right? Big miners could sell Bitcoin and buy the new hardware. Smaller miners really couldn't afford the new hardware given the bear market. So you had big miners selling Bitcoin to buy equipment. And then you had small miners literally liquidating their operations, also selling Bitcoin, 
That resulted in Bitcoin kind of stopping at one point around 6K. And then you woke up one day and it was at 3K in five days. Naturally, after a decline from 20K all the way down, that scared people to death, right? I remember I was in crypto back then doing research and I thought it was the end of the world because everybody thought 6K was a bottom. All right, so what have we got? When will crypto go back up? Well, if the Russians don't sell their Bitcoin, if they buy something with it, and interest rates stop rising, and stocks don't fall out of bed, then the case for crypto can reemerge. But the reason I think crypto sucked over the weekend, right, and all this European FUD popped up was because everyone's afraid of the big seller and rising rates. Let's go to Glassnode, okay? Over the weekend, Glassnode came out with a new indicator and they did a video about it. So we have Glassnode, right? Let me take you through uh, the best I can as to how I understand this. So the new indicator is called the Bitcoin Accumulation Trend Score, all right? I call it the who's buying the dip indicator, okay? So the purple lines are, you know, people really buying it, whether it's a dip or not. That's strong accumulation. Then when it starts to go orange and yellow, all right, you, you sort of, you know, you get less accumulation and more selling. So purple, everyone's buying. Yellow, everyone's selling. Orange, somewhere in the middle. Now, let's go to history. So Glassnode brought up 2018, that's on the right. All right. What I noticed was after the initial peak at 20, people were still buying the dip, right? Until they stopped buying the dip and thing, their indicator went orange in late January. And of course, as soon as the indicator went orange, the market collapsed. In other words, as soon as people stopped accumulating, the sellers took over. Makes sense, right? Now let's go to the left. 2011, okay? Now, I realize these are much different prices, but Bitcoin goes all the way up. It's purple. Then it dips, okay? And then everyone buys the dip. And then what happens when everyone stops buying the dip and it goes from purple to orange? Well, the market falls out of bed. So 2018, which Glassnode brought up in its video, then I do my research and that just looks just like 2011. Now let's go to 2014 on the left. This was a little bit more complicated, right? It was, you know, a top, then some dip buying, but then like a consolidation. And then it kind of went orange later, only to see it then turn around and really go down. That reminds me of what we're currently experiencing, right? In other words, everything didn't really get purple on the way down until Bitcoin made the second top. So Bitcoin goes to 7K, everyone buys the dip. Actually, it's not everyone, it's probably Sailor, right? Sailor, over-the-counter desks, whoever, buy the dip, and then Bitcoin just sits here for, I don't know, however long, basically all of 2022. And then recently, Bitcoin started to go orange. So I don't like going back up here to 2018. And again, Glassnode was the one who kind of started the conclusion. So full credit to them for the idea. If you got rates going up, stocks wobbly, and Bitcoin on their indicator going from accumulation to, I don't know, I call it lack of sponsorship. So it's not massive selling, but you know the, the dip buyers are getting way less enthusiastic and that's led to tops. Now, if you put the Elliott Wave indicator up here, this again answers the question, when will crypto go back up? So you can see in the middle, there's a blue line, right? There's, there's a red trend down and then there's a projected yellow trend down or orange trend down later, potentially. When does crypto go back up? Well, crypto goes back up when all this other stuff that I've showed you doesn't pan out. Certain altcoins lead, don't go anywhere because I have that. And Bitcoin takes out 42K. 
How do we know that Bitcoin hasn't topped like what Glassnode said? How will we know? Well, when somebody goes, okay, the Fed's out of the way, the Russians are going to do what they're going to do, and I want Bitcoin. I personally still want Bitcoin and Ethereum on my crypto.com card in case something weird happens. But that's just me. I can't move the market. <laughs> Wish I could, but I can't, right? 42K, right? Bitcoin has got to run, okay, and show that it can break out because last week was miserable. It was totally miserable, right? You, if you bought it on the way up thinking it was breaking out, you were stopped out 10 minutes later. Awful. And then it just sat still, which is even worse. Okay, Ethereum. What can I say about Ethereum? Ethereum should be a lot higher, right? Inflation expectations are mooning. Last time that did that, you know, ETH was much higher than where it is right now. Much higher. So what's going on, right? So I'm not, I'm not liking it. I'm not like, I'm not like, <laughs> okay. I'm not saying anything good or anything bad about this chart. The range is narrowing and ETH's got to break out one way or the other. So you got to see ETH smoking through 3000. Okay. Before you can say, all right, crypto can go back up. Crypto has to prove. And I always talk about this, prove that somebody is willing to pay higher prices, right? When it goes up. Are people willing to say, oh, yeah, I'm in? Because right now, right, the range has been contracting. It goes up, it comes back down. It's a high, it's a lower high and a higher low. So people are just like frozen. And for the market to go back up, right, people have to get unfrozen, right? And if they don't get unfrozen and equities go down or there's some sort of Fed or geopolitical event, which I can't predict, but realistically, how, how can it be good? All right. Zcash. So part of our presentation today was about, you know, price predictions on a couple big coins. Now, Zcash has a new narrative, really strong fundamentals, really good talk on Twitter. Every time Zcash beats Bitcoin, okay, the whole market goes down. So right now, Zcash is sort of had its big move and is sitting there. And I don't know whether the candlesticks, these little candlesticks that they're making are reversal formations or consolidation formations. Zcash feels really frothy, all right? So I think with Zcash, you have to be careful. Now, Rune, the small altcoin that, you know, I can't stop liking, not investment advice. Okay, we got this originally from Red phone crypto, it is questionable as to whether or not this coin can execute based on technology, but it is a DeFi play. It is a cross-chain DeFi play, and it has been breaking out, right, over the last week. So the, the latest level I have is 724, okay? If Rune takes out 724 and keeps going, nine is possible. When does crypto go back up, right? When Rune and Luna lead, and most likely Zcash too. Speaking of Luna, so on one hand, there is a higher high and a lower high in RSI. That means Luna could be losing momentum. Luna could regain momentum if it gets back above 92. So the answer is, the answer to the question of when will crypto go back up? Probably if Luna takes out 92 and smokes higher. So Luna and Rune literally could, I think they could bail out the whole crypto market, right? But as of now, buyers have stopped buying. There's a big seller out there potentially. So leadership is going to have to come from somewhere else other than Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that is the market update. Now, let's go see what we got going on in the chat, okay? What's up with Luna, all right? We, I, I've seen a bunch of things on Luna today. I've seen money on Etherscan. Our fundamental guys moved. Uh, they found something where, you know, money is being moved around for a big Luna bet, potentially, okay? JF, I appreciate the love, all right? Okay, what do you think about Solana? We're going to get to that. Kuwait, welcome. 
Okay, when is the Ethereum bottom? Okay, well, the Ethereum bottom will be when everybody stops or starts buying Bitcoin. Everybody expects Bitcoin to do better. So buyers have to show up. They have to. The other thing you need for an Ethereum bottom is you need, you know, the Fed to not go ballistic. Okay, so gold can go up because Ethereum and gold move together. Okay, somebody's saying Yellen said no recession. Okay, we'll see. Like the recession call is almost consensus at this point because of demand destruction from higher inflation. Okay, hello from the Czech Republic, Australia, and Mexico. All right, now I know y'all are waiting for the DeMarc work. So let's get to that. Okay, so here is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's start with the 90 minute chart of Bitcoin. All right. So overnight, we talked about this level last week. Like I was like, well, yeah, maybe it goes down to 37 K. I don't even said, I don't even think I said that. I noted the support point. And that was of course, where they puked it on this Europe fund, right? Europe's going to outlaw crypto and proof of work. Okay. I don't know how that's going to work out, especially considering, you know, the Euro has got serious problems. Okay. Not going into it. I'm not hating on Europe or the Euro. Okay. But you know, there, there are some issues over there with interest rates, inflation, and I can't believe they would deprive their populace of an alternative currency. Now, Bitcoin is currently sitting on support around 38 K. All right. But Bitcoin hasn't gone anywhere, okay, since we last talked. They did the puke. They brought it back. The question is, are people willing to buy Bitcoin at 38 or 39K? Okay, ETH, right? I talked about 2,500 being support, right? I said I didn't want to be bearish if, if ETH was above 2,500. Okay, so the good news is, ETH held 2,500, all right? <laughs> the bad news is ETH didn't go anywhere, right? It went to 2,600 and stopped. What? what? Holy cow, really? Okay, and now some of this DeMarc work indicates that there could be like, I don't know, this is a 90-minute chart. So we could be looking at a, a kind of a sour day in ETH. Right now, to sort of expand on the picture, the, the good news is that, again, 2525 is support. So I don't feel the need to be like, oh, my God. But somebody has to be willing to buy ETH here, right? In other words, if the Fed comes out tomorrow and everything is okay, or they continue to print money, or there's some positive ETH catalyst, great. Great. But ETH is just sitting on support and not doing anything. And I don't, I don't like it when crypto doesn't do anything. Now, on a, on a brighter note, okay, on a daily chart of ETH, so I guess if there's another puke, it can go down to 2337. And there's a warning shot down here from the smart stochastic. Now, sometimes the warning shot is a move higher is coming, right? Uh, down here, you would have thought it was bullish and then it fell out of bed, right? I have some concerns that when ETH goes flat like this, when everything goes flat, that it's a sign that buying has dried up. Like sellers haven't unloaded, but the buyers are spooked. So when will crypto go back up? When this buying signal triggers a breakout of this triangle formation. That's the answer to the question. Now, Bitcoin, okay, on a daily chart. Okay. Now, there's a green candle today. That's good. Okay. Support is holding near 37. That's good, right? That, you know, we'll, we'll basically Bitcoin is very close to where this big, these big wicks or these big reversal candlesticks occurred. So is anything terrible going on on Bitcoin's chart? No. 
Is anything good happening on Bitcoin's chart? No. The Fed is tomorrow, right? And you can be sure that Mr. Putin, right? The best way to take down America is to take down our stock market, right? And one of the things I thought of is I'm wondering if the Russians would unload Bitcoin as a way to try to push risk assets lower. Now, I really hope that this, it's not true that any Russian Bitcoin that gets sold is going to get soaked up by the rest of the world. But crypto, we have to see people willing to pay higher prices. All right. Okay. So VeChain has officially launched. So I got a request here for VeChain. All right. And I'm going to, I'm going to jot down two other requests that we have. All right. So let, let's go to DeMarc work. Let's start with VeChain. Okay, pulling V chain up now. All right. Well, like I said, you know, with this kind of stuff, where where is the bid? Like, like where are the buyers? You guys know I like VeChain. You guys conceptually, I like VeChain. Okay. So why is everybody selling every time it gets to a trend line? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Aruna is asking, how do I look at DXY and the BTC dominance chart? All right. Let's, let's talk about that. So in DXY, and again, I, I find this personally nauseating, but the dollar continues to go higher, at least for the moment, right? In other words, the dollar, I thought the dollar was just going to flat out top, okay? But the rising dollar is actually bringing certain commodity prices down. A lot of people don't notice, but oil is back to 100 after being much higher. So I think people are afraid of the dollar index going 3% higher. Okay. That is another reason why, you know, crypto at least sucks for the moment. Everybody is afraid that the dollar is going to go up. Now, I don't know that Bitcoin dominance is necessarily related to the dollar. Okay. But Bitcoin dominance is making a very similar chart formation. Okay. In the sense that you know, Bitcoin dominance is, is breaking above some recent support. I'm sorry, above some recent resistance. So there was resistance at 43 and the ceiling has become the floor. Okay. And then let's go to an expanded view. Let's like go to a weekly Okay, Bitcoin dominance is in a downward sloping range. So let me label this March 14th, Bitcoin dominance. Okay. Bitcoin continues, right? This thing where the downward sloping range is like bears are trying to hold it down. And if they can't hold it down, it pops back up. So if Bitcoin is a part of the new monetary order, but altcoins are not, Bitcoin dominance can go up. Okay, it can. All right, someone's asking for XMR. Okay, this privacy narrative is the real deal. Okay, I saw a tornado cash up today. So the privacy narrative isn't going anywhere. Okay, but the question is, can the privacy narrative save crypto, right? It's, it's as simple as that. Can it? Okay. Monero, uh, an old high was 182. 
Okay. And Monero seems to be holding above that. So let's try a daily chart and see what that looks like. All right. So in Monero, I would say the trend is your friend, right? Every time it goes down, there's somebody here willing to buy Monero. Now, realistically, in order for Monero to get going, I, I, I would want to see it taken out like 190. Okay. That would be probably a previous fourth wave, right? In other words, this was the give up trade in Monero with the 13 bottom. All right. So if Monero can actually take out 187, all right, that could be bullish, right? In other words, when does crypto go back up? When Luna, Zcash, right? Maybe Monero, okay, Rune, when the altcoins help and go with Bitcoin, right? They got to go together. Okay, someone's asking for Matic. Okay, Dean says that everybody's a yellow flag thanks to Bitcoin's price action. Yes, that's, that's probably true. I think it's red flagged because of the price action in the bond market. And don't forget, we have the Fed tomorrow. We have the Fed and we have Mr. Putin, who is most likely going to take advantage of whatever is going on with the Fed, right, to make some sort of stunt announcement or escalation. For example, Last Friday, we were joking around about the weekend, right? So the Americans, they escalate on Saturday. And the rumor that Putin has asked the Chinese for military assistance conveniently hits Twitter Sunday night when futures, uh, stock futures open. I mean, everybody's World War III is being conducted in front of a Bloomberg terminal. Okay, Matic. I guess the thing I can say about Matic is the best support point is down at 130. So I'm not, I'm not seeing anybody like I'm not seeing sponsorship until maybe you see Matic at 130. Like make them sell it to you at a really good price. Now I had someone asking for Cosmos and I did not forget about Elron and IOTX. So Cosmos, again, I want to be constructive Cosmos. Okay, so this is the daily chart of Cosmos, right? There's your nine bottom, okay? And where's the upward price action? Like on this nine bottom, you got like one up day. And then you see this one, two, three. That's the sequential countdown. So the altcoins that on Friday we were counting on, okay, we're not getting we're not getting what we need, not yet anyway, okay. Andre said Fed is not going to raise rates tomorrow. Well, no, <laughs> look no further as to when will crypto go back up. You know, if the Fed, but you got to remember something. If the Fed does not raise rates tomorrow, that means there's a problem in the system. I remember this in two thousand and eight. Right, the Fed cut rates out of nowhere in that case. We weren't really expecting a cut, and we got one. Okay, and everyone was like, oh no, something's wrong. This time, the Fed doesn't, the Fed just holds everything steady and blames inflation on the war. Then there might be a problem in the banking system. So just, you know, be advised on that. Solana. Okay, so, you know, we got the 13 bottom. I wanted it to go above 80. It didn't, okay? It didn't. It, it's like, you know, people just selling Solana, right? There's your trend line, right? And I'm guessing the next level that gets tested is 76 because they just can't buy this thing back up, all right? Dream Traveler said, this man is spreading FUD. No, I'm not spreading FUD. I'm answering the question, what, what needs to happen for the market to go back up? Okay. So either Solana has got to like hit 76 and come back. 
you want to see people buying it at higher prices, not just grabbing it on a dip for a trading play, right? Now, right now, we're not seeing that. But of course, you know, the Fed's tomorrow, right? I could tell you whatever I could tell you now, but the Fed and the price action off that, along with what's going on with the war, because, you know, Mr. Putin likes to react, likes to get the market to react, right? Right around big political events. So trust me, dude, I work for a crypto company. I, I am not, I am not spreading FUD. I'm trying to tell you what to look for when it comes time to adjust your portfolio. Now, on a, on a nicer, <clears throat> on a nicer note, Cardano has made a nine bottom. Now, if Cardano gets wrecked, it can go down to 68 cents. But of all the things that look like the bulls are trying to actually hold it together, it might be in Cardano. Okay. All right. It might be in Cardano. <clears throat> all right. Let's try EGLD. Let's try Elrond. All right, so the good news is Elrond is holding support in the 140 neighborhood. So nobody is selling Elrond. It's making a base and somebody has to buy it. So that's the daily chart. Let's look at the four hour chart. So again, today's March 13th. Okay, so Elrond puked out to support at 135. Okay, that level's held twice. So some of these layer ones like Elrond and Cardano, they look okay, but again, right? I think with Elrond, you have to ask yourself, can you buy a dip and make money? Like you bought a dip, you made money, but then if you tried to hold it, you had to look, tolerate the dip again. If you bought these two dips, can you make money? Okay. All right, let's go to IOTX. Because I know that there was a request for that much earlier on. And I want to get everybody's request taken care of. All right. So a lot of these setups are similar, mainly because the market hasn't gone anywhere. Okay. Now in IOTX, the point that matters is six cents. So if there is a puke, right, that's where you want to, that's where you want to be. All right. So let's pretend it's not 2018 and let's pretend that, you know, after everybody, you know, potentially pukes it out, where do you have to puke it out? Like, do you want to panic sell it at six cents? No, I wouldn't. Okay, it looks like 0 0.0594 is the key support level there. Okay, Trapo, you're welcome for doing Elrond. Let's try sell. I don't have it here. Let's move over here and take a shot at that. And then we'll make sure we take a look at the market. Okay, here's sell on a daily chart. Okay, so it hit trend line resistance around $2, right? That was also kind of a horizontal resistance point. Let's take a look at Something I, I have been, I, I, I normally use a lot at a bottom. Feet, fib speed resistance lines. So these are like GAN lines. They're diagonal points. So obviously at 176, there was resistance and it got rejected there. Okay. Okay, support is at 130. 
So I would imagine if whatever this, you know, this coin cell frame, if it holds one thirty, a dollar thirty, it's okay. All right. That that's that that's how I would draw this. This is this is useful. This is very useful, right? Particularly if you're trying to find a bottom. Okay, I, I used it over in room. Okay, so this is Hathor, right? I can tell this is a metaverse play based on, on how I drew the GAN lines. So, you know, you're, you're taking out, you're, you're taking out fractals on the Williams chart, right? So when this thing took out say 49 cents, all right, it was questionable. Okay. And then it's just sort of sitting here. Now, if you want to hear something good, all right. It really does look like, you know, if you zoom in here, right? If, oh, this is weekly. Wow. Let's go to daily. Actually, let's go back to weekly. Okay. If you look at this, all right, Hathor is really oversold. Now, I think Hathor has probably got to come back above 51 cents. But Hathor is really stretched out versus its Williams moving average system. I mean, these red lines, I mean, this is really stretched out. Now, when it comes to a lot of this metaverse stuff, I don't know what happens with the Fed. Like in equities, highly speculative assets have gotten smoked. So I would say with Hathor, it's got to get above 0.516 before you can think that maybe a reversal is on. I guess the good news for anybody who's long it, who's like worried about it, you know, if you take out the recent low, if it makes a new low, right, which was right about at 40 cents, okay, especially if it closes through that, then you got to start asking yourself, is this a speculative asset that's going to get wrecked? Okay. Okay, so it's not it's not a metaverse play, but it is a layer one. All right, so that's interesting. Okay, here's another really interesting support point. Again, it's around 42 cents. For me, not investment advice. I don't think I'd give up on this. You don't want to be given up into support. You, you only want to give up if they if they break support. Okay. Hey, someone's asking for Cosmo. So I know we have, we have a group of people, right? We have a group of people who tunes in for the market update, like the PowerPoint. And then we have another group of people that likes to tune in for requests. Okay. So sometimes I got to do things a couple times. Hopefully no one minds. Uh, I would love to see Cosmos back above 2815. Okay, this is the daily chart. Okay, this is kind of a stalemate here, right? No, no big movement off the nine bottom, right? Cosmos is one of your better altcoins. What, what, ha when will crypto go back up? When the best coins lead, okay? Okay, Aruna is asking, is total three bullish or bearish? Well, unfortunately, total three is bearish. Sorry to say that, right? Total three is total altcoin market cap. Whoops. Total altcoin market cap minus Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay, so this is a head and shoulders top. Okay, the neckline is at 700 billion. And every time altcoins go back to 700 billion as a group, it fails, right? Now, I mean, there have been so many failures here, 
right? It's like, you know, week of early February, fail. Like, huge rally up, just completely faked me out. I was like, oh my God. Like, look at this. This is, the, this is what bear markets do, okay? You go up with the green candle and you break above the neckline. It's awesome, right? It's good. Then you get follow through. It goes up again. You're like, all right. Then it comes all the way back down and you get the accursed failed rally, right? And then, of course, it breaks down and then you get another failed rally. This is why I'm telling you, this is why I'm telling you that if you got, I mean, this stuff about 2018, folks, I didn't wake up today. I didn't, I didn't work over the weekend to say, oh, wow, let's see how this matches up with 2018. Glassnode did the video on the indicator, right? And they said 2018, and then I pulled 2011, 14, and 22 together. But yeah, this is, this is, not, this is not looking, okay? This is not looking good. Now, somebody's saying total two looks better, okay? I, I absolutely love geeking out on these particular charts, okay? So if you look at, at total two weekly, a okay, total two, total two is crypto market cap without Bitcoin. So basically it's Ethereum and the big layer ones, right? So you can definitely draw support in total two at 950. And honestly, this makes sense, right? What am I even saying? ETH is underpriced relative to inflation, but ETH has to go do something. And there's been this stalemate here at 950 billion. Now that's either because we're all waiting to buy it. We're going to come in tomorrow off the Fed and be like, oh my God, it's going to the moon. Or it's sitting here because it's just kind of like it's a stalemate. And, and the, the eerie quiet bothers me. Okay. Trader Joe is kicking me below the belt. Help. Let's take a look at Trader Joe. because I definitely don't want you to be in pain below the belt. Okay. So here is Trader Joe daily. Now, for anybody who's new, let's go over how the DeMarc work goes. DeMarc has a lot of indicators, right? The nine that you see in big print, that's called the setup phase. That's the first part of a trend. Or, or it's just a move within a range. You don't know. Now, it's a trend when you count the conditions, like the high or the low is lower than the low two days ago. It's complicated. We don't need to know the details. I don't. Okay. The market goes down. Okay. It prints the nine set of conditions. One of two things should happen. Either the market should just turn around and go back up, or there'll be a counter trend bounce, and then the market will resume, and then count go into what's called countdown mode, where you'll see a set of conditions all the way out until a 13. So Joe goes down, it gets the nine bottom, you get a little bit of green candle, and then it gets smacked again. It tries to go up again today, and it gets smacked again. Now, do you want to hear this? No, of course you don't. Right? You don't want to hear this. Now, the good news is in Trader Joe, okay, if you look at a four-hour chart, okay, there's a 13 and a nine bottom together. So there's support in Trader Joe at 78 cents. Now, should you puke Trader Joe into support? No, right? If it's killing you and it's at 81 cents, then you probably have to put up with the pain until 78 cents. And then if that doesn't hold, then you have to adjust your portfolio. Now puking, I don't want to puke Bitcoin into 38. I don't want to puke Ethereum into 2,500. Just make sure I'm not making an ass out of myself for saying that. Just check where the market is. Okay. So, you know, ETH is holding, but it's down. Okay. So when you're getting kicked below the belt, the question is, when do you adjust your portfolio? 
do you want to get totally wrecked? Now, if you did a bad trade, folks, everyone's done a bad trade. If you've done a bad trade, you have something in common with every trader in the world. The best traders in the world have bought the high and sold the low. Sometimes in the same market, in the same trend. Okay. All right. Steve J said the Fed will have to print. Okay. Kev B. Streaming says crypto is dead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Driftless Crypto says, you know, it's quiet, like, you know, before a tornado. Okay. Polka dot. Okay, somebody wants to demark indicators on Luna. Okay, that is up next. So again, you know, Polkadot is kind of in no man's land, right? The support is at 1660. Now let's get to Luna. Okay, so this is the Luna four hour chart. The good news is Luna is above support at 87. So if you believe in the uptrend in Luna, right? You want to see it hold 87 and preferably break 92. So there's this warning signal. Okay. It doesn't have to be a top, right? It doesn't have to be, but it was over here. So if Luna is below 87, if you've been long, I'm guessing your stop's got to be below there. Now let's just do a, a like a Luna. That's the daily chart. Okay. Let's do a, a deep dive. Let's go through them all. Okay. Here is the intraday chart. Right now, there is some good news here in the sense that you see this A, B, C. So that's the le that would indicate that you know there's the correction in Luna has has already happened. So that's bullish. So 87 is holding. That's constructive. It looks like there's you know an A, B, C correction. That's constructive. All right. There's support at 79. So if you miss Luna and you're dying to buy it. That's what I would be looking at. Now, just keep in mind that we had that stochastic from back, you know, we had this, the picture in Luna, we had that stochastics divergence. Okay, we don't have that here. I can bring that up on another chart. So Luna goes and this is a 90 minute chart now. So Luna did its nine top, supports at 87. Okay, this, this is sort of neutral. Messing with Luna is not a good idea, okay? Messing around as in like trying to short it. I know guys want to short it, but if Luna actually holds it together, let me see what the Luna, let me see if I can get a weekly chart on this. Okay. So there's a weekly chart in Luna, okay? And I don't like the way those candlesticks look. So this may not be the best way to look at it. The intraday and the daily charts are better. So again, this is the four hour chart of Luna. Looks like the corrections over supports at 79. All right. Supports also at 87. Okay. In order for this market to get going. Okay. In order for the market to get going, Luna has to lead. Okay. Yes, yeah, some of the coins are not showing up on token metrics. Token metrics is having a problem today with its data feed from CoinGecko. Okay, so our data guys are aware of it. I let them know this morning. So we appreciate any, we appreciate your patience for token metrics customers. All right, Rose looks like a nine bottom, looks like it's working on a 13 bottom. It almost feels like some sort of give up trade is happening here right? Because it couldn't rally. Okay. So here's your 13 and your nine, but it's still getting hammered. So 1929 is the level of support that you would expect to hold if there really is a give up trade in rows. Okay. Not, not what you want to hear. I know. Okay. But you have to be careful with highly speculative instruments in this market. Okay. So a bit boy from his car talking XRP would prefer to see XRP above 77 cents. That's a big DeMarc point.
okay? Again, right? Somebody has to be willing to buy XRP above 79 cents, right? I, I think smart money in XRP will tell you what's going to happen with the court case. You'll, you'll know if it just starts mooning. Smart money knows these things. Hedge funds know. So if you see XRP just start taking off, then you know it's going to happen. Right now, it looks like retail is getting nervous. Right now, if you missed XRP and you, you, you're dying to get involved, 72 cents is a DeMarc support point in case they blow the market out. Okay, Steve says, Rune's looking good. Possible 50-day moving average crossing above the 200-day. That's interesting. Appreciate you bringing that up. Hey, again, Rune, I've said positive things about it, but it's not investment advice. Okay, it's got an interesting chart, but whether they can execute from a technology point of view is in question. Okay, that's not going to stop me from being interested in it because right now it's a one-coin market. Okay, 70 cents in Audius. Again, we got to go to 90-minute charts to get reads now. So 70 cents is the pivot, right? It was the low, right? All throughout, you know, like say March 10th to March 13th. And now the old support is now resistance. So sad news for the moment in Audius. Now, again, Audius comes back above 70, especially on any kind of fundamental catalyst, that's good. And the best I can give you right now in some of these coins are pivots. Okay. AVAX, which no doubt is the house of pain today. Okay, Ben J is still big on Zcash and Monero here. Don't blame you. coin, then the narrative can pick up. Okay. So this is avalanche on a 90 minute chart. If the avalanche puke continues 65 support. Okay. On the four hour chart. Okay. This looks like, believe it or not, this looks like some, some kind of give up trade, right? You had the third bottom, you had the nine bottom tempted to rally. Okay. And then it's falling apart again. So you may have eight hours of avalanche getting hammered. Because then you'd have a nine bottom and a third actually. Okay. On the daily chart, there's not a whole lot to tell you other than that there's support at 54. And nobody even wants to talk about that, I would imagine. Okay. Solana. Okay. Solana is a really good example of a couple things. One we had a guy once and he, he, he did us all a favor. He did because, you know, Solana was higher, right? Solana was up back over here at 102. He's like, I got out at 89. Okay. Well, he got out at 89 and now it's at 79. So he made a portfolio adjustment. Now the market, you know, the market sort of made him feel bad about it. But when you got to make a portfolio adjustment, folks, make the adjustment because you never know. If you get out at 89, it could go to 100 and then it could turn around and go to 76. Now, clearly with Solana, again, there's this trend line and every time it goes up, people are selling, right? So this VC selling of Solana apparently is continuing. Support is at 76 cents, Okay. Omar is adding to his V chain bag after the launch of the stable coin today. Okay. Any thoughts on Theta? Okay. So Theta was looking great. Okay. Then Theta fell out, you know, <laughs> turned around. And support is at 242. Now, one thing I, I, I had used on Theta before, I believe. Okay, so here's the daily chart of Theta.
Okay, so here comes the FIB extension indicator. Okay, so this is a daily chart of theta on the 14th of March. Okay, so it feels like every time theta gets anywhere near this line that they sell it. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel terrible. Okay. But again, are people willing to pay higher prices? Okay, every time you get higher prices in theta, they're selling it. This is what went on three days ago. Now, I don't think anybody has interested in pounding on theta on weakness either. I think if it holds 260, it might be okay. Somewhere in this metaverse, uh, somewhere in the metaverse, right? There's going to be something that shows a bid. Now, I don't know if it's old school stuff like Theta and Audius. Okay. Yes, folks, somebody is reminding you to hit the like button. If you like custom TA to mark work, okay? Somebody has Luna's target as a thousand. All right. Crypto Jedi. Okay. TWT daily. Okay, so you had three failures at these lines. One, two, that was kind of nasty, three. Okay, so when you start seeing these things start getting rejected at resistance, then, you know, you have to ask yourself, all right, you know, what, what's going on? Do I need to adjust my position? Remember, you got the Fed tomorrow, folks. You got the Fed. Okay, QNT. Okay, well, so we're not getting anything out of the FIB, out of the FIB extension number. Okay, the moving averages are tangled up, so there's probably not anything to do in QNT. Let's see if at the mark work we get anything on that. Y yes, I can chart helium. That was looking good. We have API three, and I know we need help with Phantom as well. Oops. Okay, let me stop this. I gotta bring I gotta bring the whole system back up. It looks like it crashed. Okay, Marco notes Elrond is holding nicely. Yes, we, we looked at that earlier. Okay, so here's QNT. Let me get this shared again. See, this gives me the creeps, right? I would think QNT as a payment system would be a good play. Like I was saying positive things about QNT last week, you know, just conceptually, and they're smashing this thing. <laughs> you know, they're smashing it. So I guess support is all the way down at 87, and you might go into a mode where you'd be like, all right, make them sell it to you cheap. Hey, Phantom, is it the end in Phantom? That is undoubtedly the question that people are asking themselves. So here was the nine bottom, which wasn't a nine bottom. You just got the counter trend rally and it just kept going. Okay, so that's discouraging. I'm pretty sure on this, we were looking for support 
We were looking for support at 115, right? And it just goes to show that I'm not the only one looking at the DeMarc work when it broke that point. They just killed it. All right. Now, honestly, in Phantom, it looks like a give up trade, right? Here's the nine bottom, and you're probably going to have a 13 bottom soon. So they're packing it in and giving up and stopping out in Phantom. Okay. The best support point on like a 90 minute chart in Phantom is at 106. So if it doesn't hold 106, okay. I'm not, I'm not even sure I, I have a support point. Let me just double check this. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not seeing anything below the market, at least from a DeMarc point of view. Okay, but this is a good example of you get down, that's the setup phase, the one through nine. There's the counter trend rally. Now this thing is starting to go into countdown mode. So... If you're in phantom and this thing doesn't reverse soon, okay, you could be looking at, you know, eight or nine more down days, all right? So going back to total three, this is why you got to be careful, right? In other words, what, what do you need? What do you need, okay? All right, so Christopher says total three is bullish in his opinion. Well, you know what? Sir, I actually, I hope you are absolutely correct. I, I hope you are right. I work for an altcoin company and total three is keeping me up at night. Somebody is encouraging you to hit the like button. Please do that. Okay. We got up to 500 likes and I got 5k views over the weekend. So if you watch this video, if you tune in for the live stream, okay, I appreciate you, right? I appreciate you showing up because, you know, those numbers, they, they help me. They help me get content out to other people and they also help me personally. All right. I should say professionally and personally, because I get bummed out if no one's watching. Okay. Little, little, little true confessions there. All right. So in API three, Okay, there's a lot of support at 452 and some below that at 437. Okay, so you probably got another, at least another eight hours of not so good in API 3. Okay, you know, again, the 90 minute chart is very similar. Okay, now let's see what else we got going on here. Okay, somebody is asking me which has the better outlook, Pax Gold or Ethereum two to three weeks ahead? A proverbial crystal ball question, which I don't mind answering. Okay, let's look at gold. So I, I think it's consensus that gold should go up, right? I, I think that everybody believes that gold should go higher, okay? Now, Pax Gold is currently below support and is probably getting hurt by higher interest rates. Higher interest rates, higher dollar hurts gold, okay? Now, you have a nine top from the other day. Right. So that's where everybody was bullish, probably including me. All right. I would say 1885, right, is a very important level in PAX. Now, if I had a pick between PAX and Ethereum, well, being a crypto guy, okay, out two or three weeks. Actually, let me go back to this daily chart because I just saw something really interesting. Okay. So when you look at this daily chart, right? You've got this big warning signal of a big move coming. Okay. So I would say err on the side of what happens if the market goes down. Like if everything crashes, like if you have an everything crash, just let's say the worst case scenario, if you're going to evaluate an investment in this environment, you have to first say, what are my risks? 
Okay. I would say if risk assets blow up, even though I like Ethereum, it's support at 2,500, or at least that is support. Let me put it that way. If risk assets blow up, Ethereum and stocks are going to blow up hard. If, if gold blows up or if gold goes down, it's probably only going to go down to 1885. So maybe everybody FOMO'd into gold, but where are you going to lose less money? I would say in gold. You would want to buy Ethereum if Ethereum proved it's good. Like if the new monetary order was out, right? If stocks were okay, or just people said, hey, Ethereum and Bitcoin is money. So evaluate investments based on what you can lose if you are wrong. Because the Fed and war are out there, okay? Dean wants to know if there's a descending triangle in theta. Hey, I know we looked at it before, but I'm always, I'm always open to our friends and checking out whether, you know, what they see, okay, is what I see. So our, 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 our colleague on, on the show, okay, is, is saying that, you know, theta could be in like a downward sloping wedge. Okay, that's possible. That's possible. Okay. What happens when you have a downward sloping wedge is that when you get the move through it, it really goes. So if this is true, okay, theta has got to have some punch and you got to see people willing to pay higher prices, which right now you don't. Now, a fundamental catalyst will likely change that. Okay, PERP. Okay, another altcoin I, I just can't stop liking, <clears throat> even though I should get off that like sugar. Okay, so there's a double 13 bottom on the daily chart of PERP. Support is at $3.43 if they decide to just destroy it. And then there's this, you know, this, this warning signal down below that some sort of major bottom could be in. Now, I have seen PERP go up as the market goes down. I have seen that from last year. Now, the question is, is everybody cashing in their staking rewards? Are they just selling any and every uptick? You'll know because like, when they puke PERP, man, do they puke it. So if you see a puke to 343 with a 13 bottom and that holds, then that's a, that's a reason to come in and think about getting long perp, okay? But, you know, obviously, obviously, this hints more at a bottom than anything else, okay? Okay, Marco is looking for S and X. Okay, somebody is asking for the 50 and 200 day moving averages. It takes a little bit of time. DeMarc, DeMarc does have, it's not the 15 to 200 day per se, but it does, it, it is a nice moving average system. So again, with synthetics, as with all DeFi, right? We can pray, we can hope. But when this guy quit Phantom, like I saw this blog, I believe it's Kaiko, K-A-I-K-O, right? They just, they did a chart where they just posted what happened to DeFi when this guy walked away from Phantom. Man, they are just smashing this stuff, right? Projects with strong fundamentals are struggling. Accumulate or go away? Good question. Strong fundamentals don't matter when you have black swan style risk. In other words, I came from legacy and then I have four years experience in crypto. Some of the stuff that's going on here, I, I have never seen anything like this. I saw something like it in 2008, 
Okay, but this time crypto's involved. All right. So project fundamentals, unless there's like a catalyst that's happening now, like, you know, Luna may have the stable coin of choice, right? Cross chain DeFi may be taking off and Rune, which was beat up, may be coming back. Those are two examples. Layer zero is not going away. So Cosmos at some point, right? So good projects, yes, but at good entry points. Like right now, the entry point in synthetics is $3.46. That's where it was down at before, right? And that's where the support is. So good fundamentals don't mean anything if you're in a bear market, right? Or there's some event that comes out. Right, like uh, you know, Glass Notes talking about 2018 rates are rising. So I'm not spreading fud. I'm I'm telling you what's out there, because you know Glass Note gets like 10k views on those videos. Okay, Chainlink again, like who in God's name is dumping Chainlink at twelve dollars? It's like, wow, really? Especially after a 13 bottom and there was no rally. Like I thought this last week, I was like, oh yeah, chain link's gonna, gonna go up. Right. Um, all right, folks. Uh, I, I have to wrap it up. Okay. I, I have to go. So we have a, a, a sudden wrap up. Uh, I definitely appreciate everything. I definitely appreciate y'all viewing. Okay. When does crypto go up? What makes crypto go up again? When does it go up? When Luna, Rune, Cosmos, Bitcoin, Zcash and Ethereum turn around, take out resistance, right? And start moving higher. All right. They got to, we got to see people willing to pay higher prices. Otherwise, interest rates, war, and other things are going to weigh on crypto. All right. I'm going to write down, I'm going to go through the comments. If I missed you, I will get you tomorrow. So this is Bill Noble signing off. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.